Hello everyone, this is Gayatri Sarun. So in this video, we will have a look about start off with basics of quantitative aptitude as a part one and in which I will cover the uh, syllabus of quantitative aptitude and I'll explain the complexity of each uh, topic and as well as we will cover the speed math technique. Okay, first we will have a look about the syllabus for quantitative aptitude. Uh, the thing is it, it it will be divided into three parts first one is arithmetic second one is di and third one is miscellaneous in arithmetic we used to have uh, many topics in which i'll explain you each uh, one in a, a complexity manner okay first one is percentage and uh, it will be a moderate one only uh, it will not be complex if you know the basic rules and how to approach this topic it will be a moderate one only and uh, most probably you will get one to two questions from this percentage and second topic is ratios and proportions it will be also a moderate uh, topic only and uh, the percentage will be interlinked to ratios and average the three topics will be interrelated percentage ratio and proportion and average okay so ratio and proportion we can expect uh, one or two questions that too rare okay two won't be uh, i'm not sure about two but one you we will get the one question in exam next one is profit loss and discount this is also a moderate topic if you are uh, uh, familiar with the basic uh, formulas and basic tricks for this topic you can able to clear this uh, topic and we can get one to two questions from this and next one is average uh, this is the basic for uh, basic for most of the topics of quantitative aptitude so whenever we are getting a question from uh, average it will be easy one only so if you are uh, we need to be strong in this average average as well as in percentage because uh, all topics will revolve around this two things only okay percentage average and one more thing is ratios and proportions in this three topic you should be very strong so that you can able to clear the uh, forthcoming topics as well okay average will be easy one only we can expect two to three questions from average and next one is mixtures and allegations it will be a moderate one only i'll just explain you uh, rest of the topics you can able to understand from the topic name itself but mixtures and allegations i'll explain you in a single line uh, they'll ask a question like uh, we have a, a two tin of one is milk and one is water if we mix both the things in a particular ratio and the outcome will what will be the outcome or else in how how, how what's the, like uh, in which ratio you have to mix these two things to get this uh, uh, quantity like that i used to ask some questions in mixtures and allegations and it will be a moderate one only next one is time and work from the name itself you can able to identify time is interrelated to work like that so it's a moderate topic we can expect uh, two to three questions from time and work mixture and allegation um, we can expect one question from that okay and next one is uh, this is time here i have uh, wrong written as while it's time distance and speed okay uh, this is also a moderate question and it, it is interrelated to time and work okay it's a train distance and speed that train problem will be there no and next one is boat stream and train it it's a moderate to complex like uh, if you are familiar with the basic formulas for boat stream and train because it will be difficult for me to understand this mixture and allegation both stream and train okay so there will be upstream downstream like that many things will be there if you are uh, familiar with the basic uh, rules and uh, basic ideologies you can able to crack this uh, both streams and trains okay next one is simple and compound interest many times we used to get a di based on simple and compound interest which is from complex to moderate level and we can expect uh, four to five questions from simple and compound interest next one is partnership which is from complex to moderate level in sba uh, po mains exam and all we can expect simple and compound interest in da form as well as in partnership as well okay next one is mensuration this is a uh, I don't like this topic at all because uh, there will be too many formulas and they'll ask a question like I hope many of uh, many of us uh, would have learned mensuration in our 10th and 12th standard like uh, the cube is cut into two half so that you can able to make a rectangle in a rectangular plot 
uh, a circle will be made in the center what is the diameter like that they'll ask so in this menstruation topic we, we used to have uh, uh, many formulas and many basic rules if you fully understand the concept it will be easy if you understand the concept if you can't able to understand the concept like me it will be uh, complex to moderate level and next one is probability um, if you ask me it's a moderate topic only and uh, sometimes you can uh, expect a question in uh, data interpretation four to five questions in a complex manner okay and next is permutation and combination it is easy to moderate but sometimes in spa po and all we can expect this topic also in uh, data interpretation okay and next one is data analytics and interpretation in this we can expect many types of data interpretation in which they'll ask uh, give us some sort of questions in uh, tabular or line or bar graph form and they'll ask uh, five questions out of that thing so first one is bar graph uh, I'll explain each thing in a later on stage. First one is bar graph, second one is line graph, and third one is tabular graph, and fourth one is pie chart, and fifth one is spider web, and sixth one is radar. And in table also they can able to ask the DI. And in missing case DI, some of the values will be missed, and you need to find out the missing value as well as you need to find the answer for the particular question asked. Next one is castlet complex castlet. Okay, castlet DI. This will be complex to moderate. Uh, most of the mains examination will revolve around this only by asking ratios proportion, simple and compound interest, probability, mensuration and average. This uh, DIs will be asked based on this topic only. Okay. Next we will uh, see about miscellaneous. This is the easiest topic in quantitative aptitude. And first one is approximation. We can expect three to four questions in prelims and in mains you can expect one to two in some in next one simplification this is one of the easiest topic what's the difference between approximation and simplification is uh, in approximation you can able to uh, find the approximate value that's more than enough but in simplification you need to find the exact value in decimal to find out the answer okay so it will be you can expect four to five questions in prelims and uh, in simplification you can expect one or two questions that is also not sure and means okay the next one is missing number series which is also easy one and wrong number series which is also easy one either one they ask and uh, we can expect four to five questions in uh, prelims and uh, one or two questions in mains data sufficiency I'll just give you a brief about data sufficiency, which is nothing but uh, they'll give a two sentence and they'll ask a question in one cent, uh, like in uh, based on this two sentence, and they'll ask you whether first question is enough to answer the question or second question, second uh, statement is enough to answer the question, or both the sentence should be needed to answer the question, or both the sentence are not. Uh, uh, like sufficient to answer the question like that they will answer uh, ask the question in this uh, particular topic you need not to solve the full question you just want to understand to answer the asked question which statement you need fully to answer it so that is nothing but data sufficiency and next is quantity comparison and uh, same wise for data sufficiency for quantity comparison they will give two uh, statement first statement they'll uh, club mensuration and they'll club probability everything they'll club if you take one dice what is the value like that they'll ask in one question and another question they'll give that value directly or same way they'll ask in one more question so what do you need to do now first and second for two statements you need to find out the answer and you need to compare whether first statement value is greater than second one or first one is less than second one or first one is equal to second one like that you need to compare so that is nothing but quantity comparison in this question you need to solve both statements to get the answer in data sufficiency you no need to solve both questions you just want to check whether statement one or two is sufficient to solve the question you need not to solve the question okay next one is quadratic equation this is also a very easy topic you can expect four to five questions in uh, preliminary examination and uh, one to two most 
rarely in uh, mains examination so if you are strong enough in approximation simplification number series and quadratic equation you can able to answer 15 to 18 questions in preliminary examination okay next we will see how to increase speed in quantitative aptitude till now we saw how to what's the uh, syllabus for quantitative aptitude now we will see how to increase the speed in quantitative aptitude first of all first and foremost rule is you need to know the basic formulas and basic rules for that particular topic if you ask me i'll tell that no need to uh, be a master in all the topics of quantitative aptitude select a topic select out of 20 select 15 topics that you are familiar with and that you are comfortable with know each nook and corner of that topic and you should be trained in such a manner that if questions asked in any way from that particular topic you can able to answer so like that you need to train yourself no need to train for all the topics like 20 topics just pick the topic which you are comfortable with okay for that uh, things you need to know each and nook and corner and for all the 20 topics you need to know the basic rules basic rules in the sense if they ask any questions from the 20 topics you can you should uh, able to understand the basic question which was asked in the examination you should not be like uh, seeing the question and blinking what is this this is the first time i'm seeing i can't able to understand the question you should not be like that you should know what they have asked in the exam and you should avoid the question and you should move on to other question okay and uh, you should play with numbers uh, how to play with numbers you can play with toys and kids but how to play with numbers you have to increase your speed uh, in calculation by i'll tell you just an example whenever you're going in a bike or a car you can see the four number digit name plate in every vehicle in front of you so try to add up together find a unit digit avoid 0 and 9 in that particular name plate and add up the rest of the numbers and uh, try to find out the unit digit if you keep on doing the if you keep on adding the numbers whichever is visible in front of you it will increase your speed it will improve your mind calculation as well okay so try this out to find the unit digit for the numbers which are visible in front of your eye okay so in this way you can able to um, uh, increase the speed mind calculation speed as well okay and next one is mind calculation instead of uh, using pen and paper for solving each question like uh, 41 plus 42 is 83 like 41 42 plus symbol two lines and 83 instead of writing this in a paper and doing the calculation it will take 45 to 1 45 seconds to 1 minute instead do try to do that in a mind itself no need to use pen and paper so i said no play with numbers if you started to play with numbers it will improve your mind calculation so that uh, no need to use pen and paper for small calculations and all okay and also you need to know the tricks for the uh, basic uh, topics which are available in the quantitative aptitude tricks as well as shortcuts which i will explain in the forthcoming videos and very important thing to be done here is practice so if i'm taking the class here if you see this class that won't be enough to get a good score in quantitative aptitude, right? You should practice each one of the topic and you should analyze. Practice won't be enough. You should practice, practice, practice and you should take a mock test. If you take a test only, you can able to uh, find out where you are in the competition. If you keep on practicing, otherwise you are keep on learning, you can't able to find out where you are. So first practice hard practice each one thing and set a goal for every day that i'll practice um, five questions for each topic and practice well and take a mock test a free mock test is available everywhere in online okay so select a uh, website and take a free mock test and then analyze the mock test if you are taking a preliminary examination for one hour just take one or one and a half hour to analyze where you have gone wrong 
so that you can able to improve yourself in the next mock test if you are keep on doing this practice mock test analyze practice mock test analyze repeat practice mock test analyze in each mock test you can able to feel the difference you can see the difference in your scorecard okay which will ultimately reflect in your uh, mains examinations and prelims examinations so whenever you are learning a topic try to practice it and once you practice it apply in a real time online exam then once you complete the exam analyze where you have gone right where you are gone wrong and how to improve the speed how to attend the many questions okay and one more thing to be noted here is for all the preliminary examination they'll ask uh 35 questions it seems okay no need to answer this full 35 questions instead you can uh select a uh, questions wisely for example if you are selecting a question which will take more than 1 and 1/2 minutes you are having 20 minutes to answer uh, 35 questions if you spend 1 and 1/2 minute in a particular question then how can you solve other questions so you uh need to uh select the questions wisely instead of spending one and a half minute in a question for simplification and all it will take 20 seconds or 15 seconds to solve a question okay in this way you can able to solve five simplification questions you will get five mark instead of that one mark so in this manner you have to select the questions uh by doing the mock test only you can able to uh, select the questions wisely instead of practicing and doing uh, don't uh, practice a test in offline practice in online practice in system so that you can able to understand that exam pressure then only you can able to uh, analyze where you are and how you are uh, responding to the pressure in the exam okay then you can able to improve yourself understand so this is the uh, bit of advice i'm giving based on my experience and how to increase the speed in quantitative aptitude if you do this thing surely surely damn sure 100% the speed will be will get improved in quantitative aptitude section as well as the score will get improved on every mock test and you will see a glorious result in the online examination okay and next we will have a look about speed math techniques to improve the uh, speed in quantitative aptitude i already said no we need to follow some uh, uh, tricks and shortcuts instead of doing a traditional way of multiplication traditional way of addition like that uh, we can able to follow some speed math techniques first one is two digit multiplication uh, the condition for this if they have given one odd number into one even number how to do the multiplication if they given 18 in example if they given 18 into 55 what we will do no 18 into 55 5 eights are 40 5 ones are 40 carry forward is 490 then one more zero 5 eights are 40 like that only we used to do no so instead of that divide the even number by 2 and multiply the odd number by 2 multiplying by 2 and division by 2 is a simple process okay comparatively uh, doing the multiplication of two two digits numbers okay so here the even number is 18 so we need to divide this even number by 2 so we will get 9 and the odd number is 55 we need to multiply this odd number by 2 so we will get 110 so now we need to multiply these two numbers 110 into 9 which is easy 11 tables 11 into 9 99 One zero is there, so nine ninety. This is the answer. Okay. If we do eighteen into fifty five, five eights or forty like that, if you started to do, it will take surely fifty seconds to one minutes. But if you tried this one, it will take twenty seconds to twenty five second only. That that is, uh, this is the first time if you are doing this, it will take twenty to twenty five seconds. But if you practice well in this particular topic, it will take ten to fifteen seconds only. Okay. So if you see this. i'm explaining this to you so it's taking so much time if i started to do it i won't use pen and paper to divide 18 by 2 i i know the answer is 9 i know the answer for 55 into 2 is 110 i won't use pen and paper it so so 110 into 9 990 it's a mind calculation i won't use paper and pen at all to multiply 18 into 55 now 
But if you go by traditional way, I'll take the paper 18 into 55 line traditional way multiplication. So it will take 50 seconds to one minute. So practice this in the mind. Don't use pen and paper. And uh, if you practice regularly, it will take 15 to 20 seconds to multiply any two digit number. Okay. So this is the first uh, speed math technique and second one is split and merge technique okay in split and merge technique instead of multiplying the whole number we can split the numbers do the operation and add up to get the desired output okay for example the question which i mentioned is eight same 18 into 55 okay uh, 18 into 55 i already said no you can do the mind calculation divide by or divide by even if one number is odd number, one number is even number, you can uh, do the previous technique which I said to you. If both numbers are odd, if both numbers are even, how we will do? So, in this way, we can able to split the numbers, do the operation and then add the final result to get the output. 18 into 55. So, 18 I can split into 20 minus 2. Okay. 55 into 20 is nothing but 100 and 1100. Correct. So 55 into 2 is nothing but 110. So add up one more zero. It's 1100. So 55 into 2 is nothing but 110. So minus 100 and uh, like 1100 minus 110. You will get 990. Otherwise you can able to do 18 into 50. 18 into 5. 55 you can split up into 50 plus 5. Okay. 18 into 50 is nothing but 900. And 18 into 5 is nothing but 90. So 900 plus 90 is 990. So it will take 20 to 30 seconds to do this calculation. If you practice it regularly. Okay. This is also a two digit multiplication trick. Next one is when you are doing a multiplication by 5. If you want to multiply any number with 5. First multiply the number with 10. Divide the resultant by 2. You will get the desired output instead of multiplying by 5. Okay. If you are multiplying a small digit number like 4 into 5, 20, you know that. 8 into 5, 40, you know that. 10 into 5, 50, you know that. But you want to multiply 2090, 2100 into 5, it will be difficult for you. It will take time. So, instead of multiplying the number by 5, first do a multiplication by 10. Multiplying by 10 is where no minute process. Just add a 0 in the number. Okay. Divide the number by 2. It will take 5 to 10 seconds. Correct. Example, if they are asking 18 into 5, what you will do? 5 fours are 40, 5 ones are uh, 5 balance, 4, 9. No need to do that. Just multiply by 10. Don't use pen and paper. Just multiply by 10. Mind calculation. 18 into 10 is 180. Just add 0 in the unit digit. Divide the number by 2. You will get 90. Answer is 90. Instead of doing a paper, multiplication in paper and pen. Okay. Next, we will see for a three-digit number, 208 into 5. If you want to multiply 208 into 5, just multiply by 10 first, 2080. Then divide it by 2, 1040. Answer is, you will get the answer in ZIF, like 5 to 10 seconds, instead of uh, spending uh, 30 to 45 minutes in the calculation. Okay, this is the third speed math technique. And a fourth speed mag technique is if you want to multiply a number with 11, you can able to do it without using pen and paper. For example, 43 into 11, you just want to remove this one. Remove unit digit one. Don't consider that one. Just consider 43 into one. Okay. Multiply one into three. You will get three. Put it in a unit digit. Then four plus three is seven. Straight away four. Okay. No need to consider this one also. If you are asked 43, straight away write down that uh, unit digit, write, uh, add up two digits, 4 plus 3, which is 7, and 10th uh, digit you can write straight away, okay? One more example is 92 into 11. Straight away write down 2, 9 plus 2 is 11, 1, just take the carry forward, one more 9 is there, 9 plus 1, you will get 10. So answer is 1012, okay? No need to use pen and paper, it will take 10 seconds if you practice properly, okay? Next is if you are multiplying by a uh, number from 12 to 19. Multiplying a number with uh, digits from 12 to 19. Okay. So 1, 2, 3 into 12. A simple example I am telling you. First you need to remove 10th digit that is 1. 
that 10th digit in 12. So you will get add 0 before 1, 2, 3. Before 1, 2, 3 just add 0 and remove this 1. Okay. And once you've done it uh, like this. Okay. 0 and you need to remove 2. First multiply by 2 into 3 which is nothing but 6. Next multiply 2 into 2. 4. You need to add the previous number plus 3. So 7 answer. Then 2 into 1. You need to add previous number which is 2. 2 into 2 is 2 plus 2 is 4. 2 into 0 is 0 plus 1 which is 1. So resultant is 1476. You need to follow this for 12 to 19. So I will just explain you one more time. Just 2 into 3 which is nothing but 6. And 2 into 2 is 4. You need to add up before 3. And 4 plus 3 is 7. And you need to multiply 2 into 1. Add a previous number plus 4. So 4. 2 into 0 is 0. Add a previous number which is 1. Okay. So the resultant value is 1476. It will take 30 to 40 seconds if you practice properly. Same applies for the digits from 12 to 19. Okay. Try yourself. If you feel any uncomfortable or inconvenient or if you are not getting the solution please ping me in the comment section surely i will help you out okay next we will uh, see the sixth speed math technique which is uh, the multiplication from 91 to 99 okay so if you if you want to multiply 97 and 92 how we will do 97 into 93 uh, two sevens are 14 carry forward one so like that only we used to do in a traditional manner no no need to do that and all so 97 Subtract it from 100. What's the difference is minus 3. 92. What's the difference from 100? It's minus 8. So, 8 threes are 24. Okay. Either you can do it in this way or this way. 92 minus 3 or 97 minus 8. Here it will come 89. Okay. 89, 24 which is the answer. You got my point? So, the answer how we are getting is 97. There is a mistake here. 97 minus 8 is 89 and 8 into 3 is 24. This is the answer for this multiplication. Okay, I'll show you another example. 91 into 99. What's the difference between 100 and 91? Which is nothing but minus 9. Okay, and what's the difference between 99 and 100? Which is nothing but minus 1. So, you need to subtract either 91 minus 1 or 99 minus 9. You will get the solution as 90 and 9 into 1 as 9. You should not write a 9 plainly. You should add a 0 before 9. If it's a 2 digit, no need to add any 0. If it's a single digit, you should add 0 in front of the unit digit. Okay. So, next 7th speed math technique you are going to learn is if the 10th digit is same and the unit digit adds up to 10, then how to do the calculation. Okay. In this example, we need we are going to multiply 84 into 86. The 10th digit is same which is 8 and 8 and the unit digit adds up to 10 which is nothing but 4 plus 6 equal to 10. So if any questions asked in this manner you just need to do a simple calculation 8 into 9 which is nothing but 72 6 into 4 which is nothing but 24. This is the solution for this multiplication. Okay. I will show you another example for this. You can rehearsal by yourself if you feel any uh, query in this do let us know in comment section i'll surely help you out okay next one is how to find out any square number which is ending with five uh, no need to multiply if they are asking 95 square no need to multiply 95 two times traditional method instead do it 90 if they ask for 95 square as usual we know that five square is 25 so uh, the unit digit and 10 digit will be 25 and the 100 digit and 1000 digit will be 9 into 2. You need to multiply the 10th digit with the next number. So next number for 9 is 10. So 9 into 10 is 90 and 5 square is 25. So 9025 is the solution. Okay. One more example is 75. We know 5 square is 25 and 7 square like we need to multiply with the next consecutive number which is nothing but 7 into 8. 7 8s are 56 and 5 square is 25. So the solution is 5625 is the uh, answer for 75 square. Likewise you can able to find out any digits. Okay.
and next we will look about three digit multiplication and two digit multiplication we have already seen a two speed math technique for that and three digit multiplication i'll explain you but uh, this is a bit lengthy process so have a glance about it so first number is one two three and second number is four five six first we need to multiply the numbers in unit digit which is nothing but six into three and eighteen you need to mention eight and the carry forward is one Second step is you need to do cross multiplication between these two digits which is nothing but 6 into 2 and 5 into 3. 6 twos are 12 plus 3 into 5 is 15. In total 12 plus 15 is 27 and we do have a carry forward of 1. So uh, the solution is 28. Here we need to mention 8 and the carry forward is 2. Okay, and the step three is we need to do a cross multiplication for this three digits number six into one plus four into three plus five into two. So you will get the solution as 28 and already we do have a carry of two. So the final solution will be 30. We need to mention zero here and carry three. Step four will be we need to do two digit multiplication between these two numbers 5 into 1 plus 4 into 2. We will get 13 and already we have a carry of 3. So total we will get 16 and we need to mention 6 here and carry 1 separately. And step 5 is we need to do a single digit multiplication 4 into 1 and the carry forward is 1. The total is 5. We need to mention 5 here. I will just explain one more time. You need to do a unit digit multiplication 6 into 3 first second one is two digit multiplication 6 into 2 and 5 into 3 and three digit multiplication next step is 6 into 1 4 into 3 and 5 into 2 and next step is you need to do two digit multiplication which is nothing but 5 into 1 4 into 2 and next step is unit digit multiplication 4 into 1 okay so you need to add up the carry forward in the previous step in the current solution to get the exact answer this is the three digit multiplication it you feel a bit difficult uh, for this three digit multiplication while seeing the first time I am explaining this to you so it is taking much time for me. If I started to solve this it will take 45 seconds only. So if you practice it regularly you can able to also solve in 30 to 45 seconds. Okay. Next uh, technique we are going to see is multiply by 101 to 109. Already we saw a thing from 90 to 99. No same wise 101 to 109. If you are going to if you want to multiply with 102 and 104. We need to compare the same with 100 as per the previous process. 102 while comparing with uh, 100, it's plus 2. And 104 if you are comparing with 100, it's plus 4. So, 102 plus 104 is 106. You can do this way or this way. 104 plus uh, 2 is 106. The number here is 106. 4 twos are 8. If this is a single digit, you need to add a 0 in 10th place. If the answer is coming in a... Uh, two digit no need to add any zero in the tenth place okay here if uh, instead of two if three is there four threes are twelve no need to add any zero so the solution will be one not six one two okay now the solution is a single digit so you need to add zero before a uh, uh, unit digit like in tenth digit so the answer will be one not six one not eight you can do either this way or this way add up you will get one not six and four into two is eight since it's a single digit you need to add zero before that okay am i clear till this next we are gonna see the square root how to find a square root so if uh, you are given a number find out 1681 uh, square root of 1681 first of all you need to have a look about the unit digit which was given in uh, once for example 1684 the unit digit will be 4 you want to uh, first look have a look in uh, unit digit only okay so based on the unit digit we can able to find out the unit digit of the resultant okay uh, i'll just uh, explain you the rules in this then i'll show you the example it will be clear for you okay if the unit digit of the question is ends with one the solution for the resultant the resultant unit digit will be either one or nine why i'm telling you this one into one is one 9 nines are 81 so the unit digit is 1 so if the uh, unit digit of the question is 1 the resultant unit digit will be either 1 or 9 
okay same wise if the unit digit for question is 4 the uh, resultant unit digit will be 2 or 8 example 2 2s are 4 8 8s are 64 it ends with 4 same wise if the question unit digit is 5 the resultant unit digit will be 5 only if the question unit digit is 6 the resultant unit digit can be either 4 or 6 4 4s are 16 6 6 are 36 the resultant unit digit is ends with 6 so it may be the resultant for uh, this uh, 6 okay next if the unit digit for the question is 9 the resultant unit digit can be 3 or 7 3 3s are 9 7 7s are 49 the answer ending with 9 no so it's taking a 9 as a, uh, a resultant solution okay for the numbers other than the above mentioned uh, numbers uh, like 2 3 7 8 there is no reverse number reverse number in the sense for 1 we used to get either 1 or 9 if you get unit digit as 2 mention the resultant unit digit as 2 if you are getting 3 uh, as a unit digit for the question mention a 3 as a unit digit in the resultant same applies for 7 as well as 8 i'll show you an example based on this uh, rules you can able to understand it fully okay yeah first we need to find the square root of a particular number say the particular number is 676 okay first step is you need to look in the unit digit that is 6 if the unit digit ends with 6 there is a possibility for the resultant to end with 4 or 6 because 4 square is 16 6 square is 36 both ends with 6 so there is a possibility for unit digit of the resultant should be either 4 or 6 okay <clears throat> so from this first point we found out the resultant unit digit can be either 4 or 6 okay next step is you need to cancel the number in the 10th digit no need to consider that one step 3 is check for the nearest square for the 100 digit number that is first you need to find out the unit digit of the resultant next you need to cancel the 10th digit number no need to consider it next step you need to find out the nearest square root of the 100 digit which is nothing but 6 1 1 are 1 2 before going into this you should be familiar with square roots up to 30 as well as cube roots up to 25 so that you can able to find out the square root as well as cube roots of a number till 30 square you need to you need to be fully memorized same wise till uh, uh, 25 cube you need to be memorized okay so check for the uh, nearest square for the 100 digit number that is 6 1 1s are 1 2 2s are 4 3 3s are 9 so 9 is greater than 6 so the nearest square should be 2 so we have found out the uh, expected resultant unit digit of the result as well as 2 as the 10th digit this is nothing but the 10th digit resultant. So, step 4 is the answer will be either 24 or 26. But we need to find out the exact square root. For finding the square root, we need to find out the middle thing. Like uh, if the dilemma is between 21 and 29, you need to find out 25 square. Okay. So, you need to find out 25 square. As I already said, you a speed math technique for finding a square ending with 5 here the thing is 25 so 5 5 are 25 will be the unit and 10th digit and 2 into 3 which is nothing but 6 so 625 is the answer for 25 square okay 625 is less than 676 so from this we can illustrate that the square root will not be 24 because 25 is less than which is less than the resultant the resultant uh, cannot be 24 because 25 is greater than 24 so the answer should be 26 so 25 is less than 26 by this way you can able to find out the square root of uh, any particular given number okay so practice this question follow this uh, steps and practice this question i am explaining this to you so it's taking uh, uh, two to three minutes for me to explain this if i am solving this it will take uh, 20 to 25 seconds to solve this same ways if you practice it it will take 15 to 20 seconds to find out the square root of any number okay so just practice if you face any issues do let me know in comment section surely i will help you out next one is similarly we can able to find out the cube root this is the final speed math technique trick 
and uh, in uh, square root we found out no like that here also we have some tricks every number if the unit digit is 1 the resultant unit digit will be 1 if the unit digit is 5 the resultant unit digit will be 5 but only two numbers will replicate each other in cube root not like in square root we will have uh, two options for each number no in cube root we don't have any option like that we just have uh, two reverse numbers if you get two in the unit digit of the question you will get eight as a unit digit in the resultant if you get eight in the question unit digit you will get two as a uh, resultant unit digit vice versa in three if you get three as a unit digit in the question you will get a seven as a unit digit in the resultant if you get seven as a uh, unit digit in the question you will get three as a uh, unit digit in the resultant okay rest of the all numbers remains the same if you get one you will get one here if you get five you will get five here you will get four you will get four here six six zero zero everything remains the same only two numbers two and eight is reversal three and seven is reversal okay this is the only uh, rule for finding the cube root okay next we will see an example so that you can able to clear with this to find the cube root of a particular number the number is nine two six one first step you need to find the unit digit of the resultant cube root okay check for the unit digit the unit digit is one as already said the unit digit is one hence the unit digit for the cube root will be one if the unit digit is two you will get the cube root as cube root as eight <clears throat> if you have a unit digit here as eight you will get as two here the unit digit is one so the resultant cube root unit digit is one okay step two in uh square root you will cancel the 10th digit alone but in cube root you need to cancel both 10th digit as well as 100 digit you need to cancel 6 and 2 okay you will have a balance number as 9 so step 3 is check for nearest cube root for 9 okay for that only i said you should be familiar with 30 square till 30 square and till 25 cube so that you can able to find out the nearest uh, square uh, number or nearest cube number okay so for 9 the nearest cube number is 2 okay 2 2s are 4 4 2s are 8 if you go for 3 3 3s are 9 9 3s are 27 which is greater than 9 so you should consider 2 as an answer which is a 10th digit number okay so the nearest cube root for 9 is 2 hence the cube root for 9 2 6 1 is 21 so uh, not like uh, square root you will get two options like 24 and 26 you need to decide in between them to find the resultant by finding 25 square which is greater than or less than resultant in cube root you will get a straight cut answer no need to do any comparison like in between f f uh, 25 cube you need to find no no not at all okay first uh, you need to find the unit digit of the resultant by comparing the unit digit of the question second you need to cancel 10th and 100 digit third step you need to find the nearest cube of this thousand digit with this which is nothing but nine the nearest cube of this number is two so already you have found out the unit digit is one and now you have found out the 10th digit answer so club together the answer is 21 this is about how to find the cube root okay and this is all about quantitative aptitude syllabus and the basic speed math technique involved in quantitative aptitude please practice this in a regular manner surely it will help you to get very 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 good marks in quantitative aptitude and as already i said uh, please follow the techniques like uh, before explaining the speed math technique i have explained you few steps to increase the speed in quantitative aptitude please do follow that to increase the marks in quantitative aptitude surely it will help you for your mains as well as prelims examination if you have any queries do let me know in comment section i will clear it out okay thank you so much